Hello, everybody. My name's John Gatos. I'm uh, one of the performance uh, specialists and part owner of Soul Performance. I want to talk to you a little bit today about what we've been doing on the GT4 RS and also realistic expectations of what you can accomplish for different goals with different exhaust configurations. Um, quick recap of the stock exhaust system. Very similar in terms of layout to the standard GT4. Uh, let's make that general statement on the uh, four liter uh, platform between the GT4, the GTS 4.0s, Boxster 25th, Boxster Spider. They're all the same layout. This is very similar to it. You have a set of headers with primary cats in them that are monitored by the car. You have a set of over axle pipes um, with a set of particulate filters and secondary cat cores. If you're a Eurospec car, the particulate filters of which are monitored. I have a separate little video showing how you can check that, that we can link into the video. Um, on the North American cars, the factory over axle pipes, the particulate filter assembly, the first chamber of the OAP, it's completely empty. So you only have the secondary uh, cat cores in the over axle pipes in the second chamber. Uh, moving from there, you're going into the factory muffler. Now they have reused the factory muffler off of the GT4. Um, so that is a reduction on that car in terms of tubing diameter, more so than the standard GT4. The standard GT4, the OAPs were about two and a quarter in diameter, if I recall. Um, the 4RS is using three inch tubing diameter going over the axles into the muffler flange, at which point after the valves, they neck down to two and a quarter, uh, just about 50 five millimeters or so all the way through to where the exhaust tips are clamped on. So if you are looking to maximize the performance of the car, uh, unfortunately, those pretty white sock tips neck down on that muffler to two and a quarter. So you can't reuse those if you want the optimal flow path of three inch all the way uh, headers back out to the uh, end of the car. So um, talking a little bit, I would expect there's three main goals and configure, uh, considerations that most people have for this car. Um, chasing power, chasing sound level, and chasing character and tone change. So um, there is a tangible difference between different components and combinations on them um, of what they accomplish. So it's important to have good expectations, and know what your goals are specifically going into an exhaust change. And talking with somebody that knows the intricacies of these setups and how they interplay uh, with different parts in order to accomplish those goals. It's important because you don't want to just buy something and inspect it to do something when it just might not. So um, right from the get-go, the over axle pipes are probably an easy thing to play with. That's where most of the volume comes from. So if you're looking for sound level as a best bang for the buck scenario, if you change the over axle pipes out on that car, you get rid of the uh, stock secondary cats um, that are in those over axle pipes on the US spec cars or even on the Euro cars that actually have the particulates. That is a very notable overall sound level change when the valves are open. Uh, you can also change when the valves open by either putting valve controller kit to override the PSE because as we've all seen on these cars, it is the same factory um, vacuum actuated valve setup as a standard GT4. So as soon as you start moving, even if you have that PSE button pressed, it will close the valves and it will not reopen it until about four to five grand in the first couple gears and about three plus in the remaining gears. Uh, so if you want the full valves open experience all the time, you have to change the factory PSE programming. Uh, that will either entail uh, ECU software can change this. So when you press the button, it actually stays open all the time. Or we do have a valve controller kit where if you install it on the car, uh, we've got two methods. Method A will allow you to press one of your home link buttons, keep the valves open 100% of the time, and press another home link button and revert back to all the PSE controls as if it were never there. 
uh, or you can install it method B, which will completely override all the PSC programming on the car. Uh, at that point, it will either be fully closed all the time or fully open all the time based off of, uh, based off the home link buttons. So that's good for guys that are trying to pass sound restrictions at some tracks because then you can run it throughout the uh, entire RPM range valves closed. Uh, anybody concerned about uh, back pressure or longevity, please feel free to give me a call. I can give you a case study that was done up at uh, Tremblant on that over a period of many years. Um, the... So from a volume perspective, yes, over axle pipes, big volume change. Now you can do that in a few different ways. If you're looking for the most aggressive, most sound level that you can get valves open out of just a single product change, we've got competition over axle pipes. So that completely eliminates and is a free flow all the way through there, no restrictions. Great return on investment, overall change, aggressiveness, um, and then we also have a set of resonated over axle pipes where right in this section, you'll see a notable resonator. It's up on the car here. We can put a photo in uh, so you can see as I'm talking here on what the resonated over axle pipe looks like. Uh, benefits of the resonated one. If you're not looking for quite the sound level change, if you're looking for something a bit more modest, the resonators help reduce overall volume change a bit. It also, at low RPMs, if you're overriding valve control and you want the car to be a little bit smoother in tone and maintain its you know, uh, tone integrity, uh, the resonated over axle pipes have a smoother, uh, better tone at lower RPMs. It also helps to reduce drone on the car if you're running it valves open all the time. So that's the benefits of the resonated over axle pipes. Um, our over axle pipes, we were very picky with the design. As we know on the stock system, flange to flange, uh, the stock over axle pipes have three inch flanges on both sides. So you can't fit three inch tubing uh, between the suspension and the body of the car. It's not possible. There's not enough room. In fact, you can, it would be a stretch to try to fit even 2.75 inch tubing. The best you could go with proper clearance between body and suspension would be about two and a half inches. Anything more than that, it's just really not that plausible. So how do we maintain and better the factory flow in terms of tubing diameter once uh, removing the particulate filter assembly, secondary cat cores out of those uh, OAPs? And that's a first in our company history. We actually used oval tubing. So three inch volume oval tubing was the key. You can see the profile here. We go from three inch full volume, go into the three inch oval, all the way out to where we go back open again to the flange. So that maintains that three inch volume flow path all the way from headers all the way to the stock muffler on the car. Uh, for optimal flow characteristics, as we've seen on 992 GP3 testing on our, um, you know, previous to the 4RS coming out, three inches, what that engine really likes. So um, that is uh, unique to us, at least so far. Uh, so uh, you know that you're getting full volume three inch over axle pipes when you buy our products. Uh, we also, for guys that want to go a little overkill in regards to radiant heat, we also have the ability to coat every millimeter of our over axle pipes, both exterior and interior, uh, with jet hot 1300 degree ceramic coating. And just like our products that come with a lifetime track and straight warranty, uh, so does the jet hot uh, ceramic coating. So we're quite keen on working with those guys. They do a wonderful job. Um, if you guys are chasing power, obviously over axle pipes make a big difference on this car. You can feel it. But if you want even more so than that, how do you chase power on this car? So um, you've got the ability to, at the same time as doing an over axle pipe replacement, replacing the stock headers on this car. The stock headers have the primary cats and they stuffed a lot into a very small space there. Um, they had to sacrifice uh, tubing length. They sacrificed the merge collector. Uh, in order to put a cat in that assembly. And even so, they still didn't really have enough room there to get to the OAPs for the Ben profile. So they used a uh, casted end cap in order to make a very abrupt change coming out of that cat core in order to come up to the over axle pipes. So you really can't put a high flow cat in there without simply getting performance out of just the density of the cat. Obviously, when you replace a header, you want to maximize 
um, you know, tubing length, you know, the smoothness of the merge collector to bring all the flow into one, you know, match uh, exhaust pulses as best you can for good overlap, for good scavenging. And um, the best way we found to do that on this particular car was to relocate the monitor cats into where the secondary cats are uh, on the over axle pipes. They conveniently from factory located the downstream oxygen sensor already right here on the factory over axle pipe, right before the particulate filter assembly. So the O2 location's already there to simply move that after a catalytic converter in order to have it monitor the high flow cat downstream as if it were in the factory header assembly upstream. So we have uh, essentially what's called them competition headers because they're deleting cats off the car uh, from a, um, from a primary monitored perspective, but we're still keeping cats in the equation. So what this does is it allows us to maximize um, the tubing length, get a nice smooth merge collector. The factory headers also have a neck down to 2.5 on an internal, um, uh, right on the inside of the flange there. So we're able to get rid of that and maximize the three inch to three inch connection flange. Uh, and then we're relocating the high flow cat into the over axle pipe here. So now we've got the, um, if someone wants to do this as standalone, you block this off. You can put this on with factory headers, factory rear muffler, um, factory, out, well, hour muffler replacement as well. Uh, and then you put just the downstream O2 sensor here. Now, if you want to monitor a high flow cat where you've deleted the primaries and relocated them downstream, you can put the downstream O2 sensor here where it actually monitors the cat core and keep the primary uh, upstream O2 sensor in the header assembly here. So uh, essentially what that accomplishes for the car is a whole lot more power than just doing a set of over axle pipes because now you've uh, maximized exhaust velocity going into the over axle pipes. So you've deleted the particulate filter uh, assembly on the car. Uh, which goes hand in hand with the secondary cats. So, and now you've taken the dense factory cat, you've gotten rid of that and put a higher flow cat in the exhaust stream after all the work's been done on the headers to maximize exhaust velocity now that there's no restriction in the header assembly. And then all the flow goes through the high flow cat downstream. So there is a great performance benefit there. And you can absolutely feel the difference between that and just an OEP replacement. Uh, that said, what does it sound like? So for guys that are trying to do as much performance as they can get while having the ability to just kill sound level with the factory muffler on the car, does a great job. When the valves are closed, it doesn't really matter what you do upstream you're still gonna have a very conservative cabin experience and the ability to completely fly under the radar with the factory muffler closed because that's how restrictive the factory muffler is in the valves closed flow path. Now, as we know, the factory valves open flow path is essentially two little bends right to the exhaust tips internally. So it's an internal muffler bypass, very short flow path, no blending of the exhaust in terms of an X-pipe or really anything that's notable there. Uh, so what that means is the tone quality at low RPMs on the factory muffler, we can call that raw, visceral, a little unrefined to some people. As you uncork everything upstream, that becomes more apparent at lower RPMs, not under load. So free revving, it can be this kind of raw kind of tone. People like that, some people don't like that. But once it's under load and the valves open, at the mid range to the top end, it's very aggressive. It is a huge delta of change between valves closed and valves open in regards to what kind of sound level that you can get out of that car, much more notable than just an over axle pipe replacement. And I would say much more aggressive and visceral in terms of an experience. Now, this kind of moves us downstream to what if you don't want to play with the factory headers? What if you want to keep the stock headers on the car and play with the second and third section at the same time or individually? So um, 
this brings us to character and tone change. Character and tone change, if you're chasing a higher, smoother pitch sound, you really have no choice but to change the factory muffler. So the high, smooth pitch sound comes from blending of the exhaust flow through an X-pipe assembly. And you can do that on this car, but boy, is there not a whole lot of room to do it. So um, when it comes to a non-valve solution, let's say you're looking for a cost-effective muffler replacement. You don't want to change the over-axle pipes because let's say you're a Euro-spec car. You've got monitored over-axle pipes and you don't want to tune your car yet in order to uh, remove the monitoring system of those particulate filter assemblies. You can replace that factory muffler uh, with just our non-valve race exhaust pipe. So that's what this is here. We've got a uh, double set of X pipes, you might think, but this second set here that you can see in the front is actually a set of anti-drone tubes, or call them Helmholtz resonators. And then you also have on the back side up at the top there on the primary flow path, you've got a set of resonators. And then you've got on the back side here, a blended chambered X pipe, which is unique to us as we don't have a reduction in flow through there. We're not just cutting two 90s and welding them together. That is a cast X pipe that maintains full three inch volume through. So a reason we did it this way is because, um, well, boy, does this car have a lot more drone than the standard GT4 due to the amount of volume of exhaust it's pushing with that new engine. So. Um, an equivalent race exhaust that we developed on the GT4, you have to do more in order to keep the tone integrity in place and also make the drone somewhat livable subjectively to an individual. So this is a, uh, I want to say a sophisticated design where we did a lot of testing at low RPMs and found that implementing these resonators helps smoothen out tone quality, take the edge off the drone a little bit, and also at the same time, the drone tubes, they do make a difference. And the drone range on this car is between about 1800 to 2800 RPM, the peak of which is between 22 to 2400 RPM, especially on deceleration. So um, this is best foot forwards on making a non-valved race exhaust that is as conservative as possible at low RPMs, but make no mistake that there is a sacrifice in cabin presence and there is drone when you change that big, hefty, uh, restrictive muffler on that car, trying to chase that higher, smoother pitch. So what if you don't necessarily want or prioritize the weight loss of a non-valve race exhaust system? What if you care more about having a valved configuration where you want a delta of change, tangible, between close and open in volume outside the car. You want the ability to fly under the radar with valves closed. You want the ability to open up the valves and have quite a bit more experience. You also want that smoother, higher pitch sound. And you also want a drone level that is reasonable inside of the car. How do you accomplish all of that? And I want to say probably 20, 25 tries later, <laughs> we've, we honed in on something that we truly do feel has reached the point of what is reasonable for a valved exhaust configuration on this car that hits all of those points. Drone-free does not exist on a non-factory muffler due to how restrictive that muffler is and the resonant frequencies involved in this car. But boy, can we make a dent on that drone and reduce it, I want to say, by about 75% compared to where we were at on the race exhaust and first versions of this uh, valve exhaust system uh, in first testing. And what we've had to do is implement, implement the uh, Helmholtz technology um, as much as possible and to target that low RPM drone range, especially um, that mid-2000s, we had to uh, implement drone tubes, kind of similar to what you'd think it would be like on this race exhaust. But the problem that you have uh, on this car is the drone free range is so wide and you have so much limited space on the back that the drone tubes would have to end up being like, I want to say, let's just ballpark it, six feet on each side, which is you know just implausible to fit on the car. So um, we've had to implement drone 
chambers <laughs> or canisters uh, would be a better word for it. So we've uh, taken the spec of the volume of what you need on the piping and we've created canisters to get that same volume based off of our calculations and after honing it in appropriately, now we have a, uh, uh, you can see kind of in the background here, these drone canisters, I'm sure we'll put up some photos here as well so you can see the uh, exhaust system in more detail. Uh, the drone canisters do work, they work very well. Um, this car in sport mode specifically, if you are a guy that's going to drive this car in sport mode, that's the first button you push every time, it's a darn comfortable place to be, all things considered for a factory buffer replacement. Now, our canisters have to be large enough so that we can fit them on the car, and that means replacing the OAPs. So you can't put our valve exhaust system on without an OEP replacement. But most people that are chasing volume and sound level and drone reduction, as we've seen, resonated OAPs have less drone than a stock set of OAPs or catted OAPs. Um, so our valve exhaust system will be available for guys that have already replaced the overaxle pipes, or you can purchase it as part of the package with our resonated overaxle pipes. Um, and that allows everything to fit on the car appropriately as a package. Um, We've also utilized the same three inch um, oval tubing here as well, because you can't use like our standard GT4 valve exhaust system. You can't go bigger than two and a half inches in the space that you have allotted between the bumper and the back of the transmission while fitting a muffler to actually create a delta of sound change on this car while meeting that higher, smoother pitch. So we actually had to build our X pipe out of three inch oval tubing. Uh, boy, was that a pain. <laughs> so there's a lot of time and effort that goes into building these, and you can see it in the photos where uh, we've had to go from three inch uh, standard tubing coming off the uh, over axle pipes into an X pipe where we've changed it into the oval tubing to make the clearance on the car, and then expand back out to the standard three inch tubing going to the exhaust pits. And this is how we've accomplished what we thought uh, initially driving the car was going to be impossible and hitting all of these uh, parts of the equation. And that is uh, a delta of change between closed and open that is tangible. You can absolutely hear the difference between valves, uh, valve flow path going through a muffler and then not going through a muffler. We've got an X pipe inside the muffler. So even when flow is going through the muffler, you're still getting that smoother character. Uh, and then when the valves are open and primary flow path bypasses the muffler, you are utilizing our full three inch volume X pipe to get that higher smoother tone and maximum performance change out of the rear system. And it also turns that entire secondary flow path into essentially let's call that another Helmholtz chamber fighting drone at lower RPMs in addition to the canisters. Um, valves open flow path actually can have a little less drone at low RPMs and fully valves close, putting it all through the muffler. So it's a, um, it's a very intricate setup. Boy, did it take a whole lot of work, but we're very excited about it since that's probably going to be one of the more popular configurations for this car. Um, and we have to, of course, uh, talk about the YSOC tips and guys that just really don't care about full three inch volume and just want to reuse their titanium YSOC tips. We hear you and we will neck down our race exhaust. We will neck down our valve exhaust system. If you want two and a quarter to fit your YSOC tips, we will do that. That will be an option. Uh, just know going into it, you are creating a speed bump on flow and that will affect it. So, uh, we, of course, have different exhaust tip options ourselves. We've got, uh, you know, slash cut is probably the most popular, kind of follows the contour of the bumper a little nicer in the rear diffuser uh, compared to sla uh, straight cuts, which kind of fight that more aggressive, you know, looking at it from the side, pops more like race car. Um, and that's really it in a jiffy, save for talking maybe about our race exhaust package. Uh, the race exhaust package is a combination of over axle pipes and our race exhaust system. And that is for the guys that are looking for the loudest thing they can get a hold of. They want these 
craziest uh, pitch sound. They want, they want the car to sound like a uh, pissed off hornet's nest. They don't really care about low RPM drone. Of course, you can get the resonated uh, set up with EMP drone tubes in order to help take the edge off of that, make it a little bit more reasonable. Um, at that point, though, putting resonators in the over axle pipes really doesn't have a good return on investment. I would say that um, at that point, it just reduces volume change a little bit outside the car. It doesn't really help all that much uh, for cabin presence uh, compared to the valve exhaust package where it does. So uh, no sense in spending the money on the resonated over axle pipes in combination with the race exhaust system. So our package of those two components will just be the competition OAPs with the race exhaust system. And um, that also, you can definitely feel the difference of more so than just the OAPs, because if you option it, not reusing the Lysok tips and a set of hours, it then becomes full screen and flow path off the headers all the way out to the exhaust tip. And uh, it is pretty transformational, getting rid of that neck down to two and a quarter on the uh, rear exhaust system. So I would say that's probably it in a jiffy in regards to what you can expect out of the different components of the car and what they can accomplish on it. Uh, again, if you're conservative and you want the most drone free, free thing that you can have, keep the stock muffler, uncork upstream, maintain as much sound integrity as you can by not doing complete cat deletes on the car. Uh, as that can get a little unrefined as you unrestrict more and more and more. Also, check engine lights associated with going through a catless. So our long tube uh, sport header package, added OAPs with the headers, uh, would be the best that you can do upstream from there while keeping uh, the check engine light off the car. Um, Euro spec cars, worthwhile again reiterating that you can't change the headers, you can't change the over axle pipes uh, without software because you do have monitored particulate filters and you have monitored cats in the headers. So you are gonna be stuck with replacing just the muffler by itself, in which case this race exhaust system would be a great sound and character change. It will net more sound level on the car than doing a valve exhaust configuration. And we have taken a lot of time to do uh, resonators and drone tubes to make it reasonable to you for a single exhaust system. Um, Software we expect will come full circle hopefully this year. We already can bench flash uh, ECUs if you want to do an exhaust system change more than just our race exhaust on the muffler. It currently entails uh, sending us the uh, ECU and us sending it back to you in order to get the tune file onto it. Um, and then we would expect OBD2 access hopefully this year in regards to doing it remotely without having any ECUs being sent to us. And we're very excited for that too. Uh, any questions that you guys have, if you wanna go down the rabbit hole on different exhaust configurations more than what we spoke, uh, please keep your eye on uh, the Renless development thread that we have for the GT4RS. We're gonna be typing all this stuff up too in case I missed anything. Um, and, you know, uh, putting, you know, more information, like such as, you know, weight differences between this. Uh, actually, I got some here. Uh, Sport header package saves 11 pounds. Race exhaust, uh, race exhaust package saves 20 pounds. Our headers save four and a half. The catted over axle pipe, 6.3. Competition over axle pipes, 13.3. Resonated over axle pipes, 8.25. Um, full valve exhaust package, we still have to you know, do final weight numbers, but we expect it's going to be pretty close to factory with how much we've had to implement on this to keep it reasonable to drive. Um, but uh, boy, is it worth the investment because it feels a lot better and it sounds a whole lot better. Um, uh, if there's any additional questions that you have, my email is johng at soulpp, as in performanceproducts.com. My cell phone is 484-883-6197. Call me. Let's chat cars. We'll go over your unique uh, subjective goals and come up with the best foot forwards on combinations or single products to meet them. Email me as well. That's no problem. We'll chime in on the development thread with your thoughts, uh, with any questions and feedback that you have. Very excited about this car. Ours is showing up in mid-May, and um, we're going to enjoy beating the crap out of it. So uh, 
thank you very much for spending the time uh, listening to me uh, chat to myself and to you. And uh, I'll catch you later. Thanks.